Afternoon everyone, this is Shane with Advanced Electronics Repair and today we're going to be working on an Onkyo receiver. Uh, right now we're going to be working on, let's see what we got here, it's a TXNR808 as you can see here. Um, this unit and a lot of other units in the Onkyo span of units, uh, they had a couple of years worth of bad manufacturing on what's called the HDMI board. And what's happening with this unit is the DAC chip, the DTS chip, is actually desoldering itself due to uh, over-regulation problems. Um, the chip is actually supposed to be running somewhere around 5 to 5.5 volts, but that's not the case. Um, it's running higher than that, possibly up to 6 volts. I haven't actually checked the pin out on it, but that's the problem. And it's overheating the chip. So what has to happen here is it has to be reflowed looking for my flux see where the flux went I've got some on it already there's the flux um, and what we got to do is we got to reflow the chip now this is a pretty simple situation and, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this chip let me get my camera angle right here I'm gonna line this chip with some oil base flux you can get it at Radio Shack uh, it's a pretty good flux it will flow very well um, and then you can clean it off with contact cleaner when you're done but what's going to happen is what we hope happens is when we heat this chip up to about 600 to 700 degrees, it's going to reflow, center itself on the pins or what I call the matrix uh, connection underneath the chip. And you don't want to touch it or move it at all while it's hot because you'll smear the solder and you'll short it and you'll never get it right again. Um, this is a manufacturing and, and basically is done by machine. From the factory so you you cannot change the balls underneath it uh, that are the solder balls because it's a real pain in the butt and it's done by laser operated micro machines so what we're going to do is heat it up we're going to use a gun the gun i have right here i got from banggood it's a gl 80 18 lcd portable temperature controlled hot air gun okay it comes with these tips I'm hoping I'm getting the angle on this camera right here. It comes with these tips. I'm going to use this size tip right here to heat that chip up. All right. It also has air and heat adjustments with a digital display. So you can get your temperature right and the airflow right for a situation like this. You do not want to get this chip any hotter than 700 degrees. Even that temperature can damage it. So around 650 is probably a good safe way um, to get it hot enough to reflow those solder connections underneath it. So what we're going to do is turn it on, point it away from everything, and we're going to, I've already set it. We're going to let it climb up to the temperature it needs to climb up to. I might have bumped those knobs. We're going to see it gets up to, uh, I want to get it up to around 600 to 650 is what I want to get it up to. 650 is more optimal because it's t it cuts the time frame down on how long you're putting heat on it. You don't want to heat this chip for more than 10 seconds at a time. Uh, you can go farther than that, but safely to keep from burning the chip up, you don't want to go past about that time frame. Now what's happening when this chip desolders itself, when it gets hot and loses those connections, it's actually causing cold solder joints and you lose what I call the speaker matrix it's not going to come up you won't get any sound from anything so uh, the amplifier relay will never click to turn on the, the high side of the amplifier power so let's watch this thing climb we can actually turn the air down so it climbs faster or turn the heat up so it climbs faster let's see here here we go because it's taking too long i'm gonna go ahead and get her going once she gets up to around 650 i'll cut it back because it'll go hotter than that. i take this off. We don't want that on there anymore. I know it's past QC. It's not blowing up in my face. <laughs> or shooting fire out of it. All right, here we go. All right, now let's back off. Right around there. That's good. It's going to level out around six. Right there. That's fine. Now let's go for it. Ah, and then I unplug it because I got to get my power strip stuff right around here. 
really going to mount these to a desk. We've really been reinventing my shop here uh, for multi-purpose electronics type stuff. So let me get this thing set up right here. All right, come on up. Let's stop about right there. That's good. All right. All right, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put the camera right here so you can see what's going on here. Once that flux starts to bubble and gets sucks underneath the chip, you're good. You can run it around the edges a little bit. You don't wanna burn up anything around it. That's why I'm using a smaller tip. All right, now it's bubbling. Now we got a little smoke, so we're gonna back off of it. And now we're gonna let it room cool because it's done, it's done flowed now. This is the point where it's critical you do not touch it, don't move it, don't blow on it, none of that stuff. Just let her cool down, and once it cools down, we're gonna take some contact cleaner. You can use rubbing alcohol, but I don't recommend it. Now, I do it all the time, but for any of you guys out there DIYing, I do not want you to use, you need to have electronics uh, um, you know, to clean it. You need to have an electronics approved type of situation to clean it. Now right now is a safe time where it's cooled off enough to where it's, it's done stuck and we can blow it cool. And if we look at the board around the chip we can see that we haven't overheated any of the components around the chip. Because the board would be darker if we overheated it, it would actually turn dark. I see that all the time with chips that run over, over regulated and it actually uh, now I'm going to use a little rubbing alcohol because I've run out of contact cleaner. And it's fine. You just want to make sure that you get any water residue off of it after it's done because you do have some water mixture in this alcohol. And I'm going to clean the chip off. I'm not going to go pretty much any all over the board or nothing. Just around the chip to get the flux off. That's all we want to do. And alcohol works great for uh, the oil-based flux. It doesn't work very well for water-based, but it'll still take it off. Um, so here we go. We're cleaning it up. Now, I wasn't getting any sound out of this thing, and I was getting no speaker matrix. Um, the board is actually not bolted in, but plugged in. Um, I've also done some, some more work on this one. I've got another one sitting over here right now. Um, this is the, the NR809, and I fixed it. You see this right here? That's your speaker matrix. You got THX and Dolby going on with the speaker matrix. I fixed this one. That one is out now reflowed, and the last process to this is you want to make sure that after you've absolutely had no sound that you get sound back and then leave it plugged in for uh, at least two days and then come per periodically uh, turn it off and back on and if it stays popping the matrix up you're good to add a heat sink that's what you're going to do we're not going to go fix the regulation problems what we're going to do is add a heat sink now and then pull them out when I put them on the other one now where did I put them because I should have stuck them back in there hold on let's see Sorry for the mess. I got so much going on in here, there's no way for me to keep up. Um, I've got some block aluminum heat sinks I pulled out. Um, but you get the picture. You're gonna use a heat sink, and I, you're gonna use, there's, there's some special stuff to use. Um, when I wanna put something together for a final finalization, I'm not gonna overheat this chip again. So if it does come a problem, I'm removing the whole chip with the heat sink on it. So I use JB Weld, um, the metal oxide JB Weld. Uh, very very small drop there's two it's basically an epoxy with metal in it these two you're gonna mix together and uh, you're gonna make very little bit so it, it it can be cracked off the top of the chip in case you need to get it off of there but it'll pass the heat from the chip to the heat sink now I dropped this chip from around 180 degrees without a heat sink down to 80 degrees with the heat sink so that's, that's just phenomenal. I'm looking for the heat sinks, but I don't see them, so I guess we'll just pass that up until I'll find them. They're probably sitting on a table or a counter somewhere here. Um, that's what we're in the middle of doing is, is cleaning this place up, getting everything organized. Here they are sitting right in front of me. Y'all probably saw that. Um, so what I'll use is something like this. It's, it's really better if you have a lot more fins. You do not want to use something like this. You can, 
but you want something with fins on it. Um, now I keep a, some of these things they are from uh, power MOSFETs in power supplies. Um, and this is the only one I got with fins. Unfortunately, the surface of it is in pretty bad shape. So um, you want that surface to be really clean and really smooth without all this rough. If you can see that on this camera, I will find another heat sink. But the trick is you want to JB weld it to the top of that chip and you don't want it touching anything. You don't want it touching a component that's lifted up on the board here like these capacitors. This chip, this one's too big because it's getting too dangerously close to that capacitor. It would work if you offset it a little bit, about like that. But since the surface of it is not right, and that's what you're gonna have right there, what it's gonna look like when it's done. You don't need to add a fan. Um, you can put a fan on it if you want to. Uh, that's not a problem. But I, I have a, a fear that if we fan cool this, it's going to cool the heat sink down faster than the chip can put the heat in. So effectively you're forcing the heat to stay on the chip and not go into the heat sink and that's not good you don't want to do that at all it'll burn right up then uh, you'll be right back in this situation but then you'll have a bad chip um, so that kind of concludes uh, what we're going on to do with these I'm going to plug this in uh, to, to end it I'm gonna plug it in and actually see if I can get a matrix up let's hope we don't get any fire uh, let me grab a cable uh, where do I have? I need. I'm buy, buying me one of these laser label machines. That way, I can actually find stuff before digging all up in everything to find out where stuff is. Um, I haven't got it yet, but I'm working on it. Uh, let's see, I need an AC power cord for like a computer. That's what goes on the back of this thing. Uh, I thought I had some in here, and I do have some. Let's see here. I'm bringing a lot of stuff out of storage now because we're organizing everything, and I'm getting tools and stuff together. Um, I know I got a cord up in here somewhere in all this mess. Bear with me. Here's one. Nope, that ain't gonna work. That's too big. Here's one. This is what we need right here. Alright. Let's unplug the heat gun. We don't need that anymore. We'll get this plugged in. Always use a three, three pin. Always use a three pin power plug with a ground post. Always. Okay, because you will take a surge and with those two, two blades only in the machine, which I'm pretty sure this one has the three pin on it, it does not. So it does not have a ground. The three pin will still work on it. So they're grounding somewhere else. I'll probably add a ground link to it somewhere. So if it doesn't work, you're gonna go through the reflow process again. All right, up your temperature a little bit. So you shorten the time on it. So we'll go to DVD first. And let's see if we get that matrix right here. Takes a few seconds to come up. And it does not come up. Now there are reset uh, procedures. I'll probably need to go run it through that. Let's see, I think it's one of these. There it goes. Now I cleared it. Now let's see if we can get it to come up. And if it doesn't come up, everyone's got the idea of how to fix this. And I'll go back through the reflow process and, and see if I can't fix it. This chip may be bad already. Um, what, what, what may be happening is underneath the matrix where those solder balls go, um, and you don't have to have a load on it, I don't believe. It, we may have to feed uh, a signal into these things uh, to actually get that matrix to come up, but I don't think that's what you have to do. Uh, I think the matrix should come up without that. Uh, the chip is not getting warm. And I may have some things wrong on this one. There, there were some actual power supply issues on this one that I fixed. But I may go through here and reseed all the connections and everything and then reflow that chip if that doesn't do it. Um, All this stuff is low voltage, uh, but you got to be careful because you got high voltage here too. So any of this, you want to stay away from this. You, you got 110 going all right here. Uh, transformer two, stay away from that. If you ground yourself out and you touch something like that transformer housing, you could get shocked. So you want to be careful with what you touch inside this unit. And I'm not responsible for someone being shocked. So keep that in mind. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to reflow it again. I'm gonna put some more flux and do the same thing I just did. 
And then I'm going to check the power supply, which is coming in right here. This is your here and here is where you got power supply power coming in, supplying 5 volts and that kind of stuff, 12 volts. Um, here's RAM. Nothing's getting warm on this board, so I think we're not getting power to it, and that's what was wrong. Um, I could have a broken pin on one of these ribbon cables. I could have a socket that's lifted a pin under it. Um, that's why I'm moving things around. So it doesn't seem like this power board is actually, that uh, HDMI board is actually getting power. Now, what would happen with this one is if you turn it on and off, on and off a bunch of times and let it warm up, uh, the other thing is you can actually warm that chip up with the gun, turn it down to like, I don't know, 300 degrees or so, and you can warm it up. And then uh, once it's warmed up, it should come on. Uh, some people are fixing these things by putting a high power light bulb over it. And when they turn the unit on, the light bulb warms the chip up and makes it start working. That's kind of crazy, but it's a workaround. Um, I'm going to warm it up and see if Matrix actually comes on. You'll hear the relay click that turns on the amplifier if it's working. We're at 390 degrees and climbing, that's fine. I'm actually reflowing again anyway while it's on. That won't hurt anything. Your matrix and your solder pins will pull that chip to center it automatically. All right, she's boiling. And I'm going to do it for a little longer this time. You know, if the chip's bad, I can reball that chip. That's not a problem. It's a lot harder to do. Now let's let her cool off and actually turn it off. You need a, a, um, a suction cup removal device that suctions to the top of that chip right after you've heated it. You pick it up directly straight up. Once you get that up, you're going to clean your matrix pads off by soldering with a tip and some flux. Get it nice and flat as possible. And then I'm, I'm pretty sure that under these chips are little sockets that you drop a solder ball in with flux and it causes that solder ball to stick in there. And when that happens, you, uh, you're able to set the chip down right over the matrix and when you warm it up, when you heat it up, those solder balls melt and the chip actually draws itself to the pins underneath. And that's what, that's what it'll do it automatically. And I'll just turn it back on. Let's unplug it, let it reset. Now let's plug it back in. And then we're going to power up and see if we get a matrix back. But I think this one's got a supply issue. I'll try to figure it out with the meters. I got a flute meter and I got a scope. I'll, uh, I'll run it through that stuff and find out where our voltages are supposed to be and where they're at. And we may have some kind of transistor or a resistor or something, capacitors. Capacitors are another problem on this thing. From what I understand, these metal capacitors here and stuff can, can actually lose their connections. I'm going to go around them and check them. I'm going to take them off the board, check them, make sure they're at the right stuff. If they're not, replace them. Because capacitance is a major issue on this board also. These are very good capacitors, but I've seen people change them out and play with their, with their size a little bit and actually get it to work. Um, because, you know, capacitance, especially in this section, can be a problem. Um, this one and this one and these these here these five right there those are the ones around this that actually are capacitance stuff so that will conclude our test for right now I'm gonna do some more work on it and make another video after I fix it and after I figure out what's wrong with it um, and I'll let everybody know in a video about that hey thanks for watching this is Shane with Advanced Electronics Repair. We do just about any kind of repair you can think of on electronics from multi-rotors to computers to receivers anything you can think of that has a circuit board in it we can make them we can break them down we can fix them we can do all of that so thanks for watching and y'all have a good afternoon